Hello, in this video we're going to look at taking inputs in Java, specifically using the scanner class to read inputs from the console. So let's just briefly hit a couple points about taking inputs. First, always prompt the user. Your, your console should never be sitting there with a cursor flashing without, any, without a prompt telling you what, you what the program wants. This presentation will show how to read inputs from the keyboard using the scanner class, like we just mentioned. Reading inputs in this fashion presents challenges reading words with spaces. If you're going to read a full name, do it two steps. There are ways around this, but this presentation will not address it. And it's really important. Any output to the screen should use proper grammar or spelling. So to take inputs in, the, in Java, we will use the scanner class. So to declare a scanner object, we write this line. S is the object name. You will access this scanner. You will use this to access the scanner methods. It can be anything. It could be SC. It could be dog. It could be fish. Um, there are, of course, some reserved words that, that are, mean something special in Java that we couldn't use. But it's important to note that the object name is indicated right there. This line in our grade 11 course will always be provided. You only need to know how to use it right now. You don't actually have to know much else about it. The scanner class contains a number of methods used to take inputs from the keyboard. So what's going to happen is we're going to create the scanner object, and that scanner object is going to allow us to run some specific methods to read inputs from the keyboard. Very important. You must indicate what type of value is being inputted by the user. So, whereas if I said to you, hey, remember 416, you're smart enough to, remember, to realize that that's a number. But if with a computer, I have to say, remember an integer, 416. Same thing, take an input for an integer. I have to specify the type that's being inputted by the user. So I'm going to hit a couple other points um, that are not relevant to the grade 11 course. However, familiarizing yourself with them now will help you access many fun ideas this year. These ideas underpin the grade 12 course. This is the reference type, reserved word tells Java to create a new sca create a scanner object. That's the object type. And this is the parameter sets up scanner object to take inputs from the keyboard. Change this to read from a file. So there is a presentation on how to read from a file and it, it uses a scanner class but instead of giving it system.in we give it a specific file to, to look at. So the scanner class API, the scanner class has a lot of methods. Don't memorize them. They will always be provided. Don't try and memorize any methods. Focus on learning how to read the documentation and find what is needed. There are a couple core methods that you will naturally memorize. It is important that you appreciate how to read the documentation and find the methods that you need. So this is a snapshot of some information from the, the scanner class API. Let's jump out there really quickly and take a look. I'm just going to pause the screen and go out there. So here's the scanner class. Again, this, this is, can be very intimidating, this documentation. What we want to get out of this course is we want to know how to read it and find what we need. And so initially, we're going to look at some very isolated sections. So right now, all we're interested, if we scroll down, is the section that defines the methods. It's always located below the fields and constructors. So these are all the methods in the scanner class. There's a lot of them. Like I said, you'll never memorize these. In fact, there's no need to. Good programmers are, are people that don't know what they need, but they can go and find what they need. So we're interested in a couple of them. We're interested in, let me scroll down here, we're interested in one called next, another one called next int, and another one called next double. So if we go back to our presentation now, these are the three that we're interested in right now. When you read the documentation, the left-hand side is the return type. So it's basically what the method spits out after it's been run. This is the name of the method. So this is how I actually access the method. So I go s.next, s.next double, s.next int. So let's look at some code. So you have your class, and then you have a main method and then we write this line in. This is what makes the scanner object. It's what allows us to access these methods. You might have an error. So the reason that the error is there is Java has thousands of classes and with so many classes it, do it doesn't make sense to load them all when the program starts. Scanner class doesn't automatically get loaded. 
So think of it like having 6,000 toolboxes. Your friend calls you up and asks for help to fix something. You're not going to bring all 6,000 toolboxes. If your friend says, hey, my toilet is broken, you're going to bring your toolbox with the plumbing tools. Java only has a core set of classes that are available, and those are in the java.lang package. To import the scanner, class and import statement must be added to the top of the program. In Eclipse, you can do this by, by, by right-clicking on, you should see a light bulb with, a, with an X. If you click on that, you should get an option to import the scanner, and then you should get this line up here. Now it's fine. The reason S is underlined at this point is because I haven't used it. There's my import line. So we always declare variables at the top. So a string called f name, an integer called age, a double called height. Remember when we make variables, we want to choose names that make sense. We always want to name them with small case letters, and subsequent words get capitalized. This is kind of a universally accepted rule that all programmers follow. So this is how we would take inputs. So we have our scanner object. We declare our variables, which are essentially boxes where we store information. We prompt the user, what is your first name? And then we have an assignment statement. So we're going to say s.next. Next is a method that pauses the computer and waits for the user to type a word and press enter. Once that word is typed in and enter is pressed, it gets stored into fname. Then it prompts the user, input your age. It's going to then get down here and it's going to run s.nextint. It's going to pause and wait for the user to type in an integer and press enter. Once it does that, it's going to return a number and it will put it into age. Then it's going to print out and put your height in centimeters. So then what's going to happen, it will come down here, see this method, s.nextDouble. We'll run that. The user will type in a double, which is a number with a decimal. Press enter and that number will get returned and put into height. There's your scanner object. There's your variables. Input string, input to int, input three double. Notice I have to specify what type of number, sorry, what type of information is being inputted. So let's look at the string example a little closer. Here's my prompt. I like using print instead of print line because then your li it, it take, you take your input on the same line. It's totally a personal preference. I do recommend you're consistent though. This is what takes the input from the user. This is an assignment statement. I know it's an assignment statement because there's an equal sign here. We always evaluate the right side and put the result into the left side. So let's look at this line a little closer. So if I was to evaluate this line, the first thing I would do is I'd take my finger and I'd cover up the left side. So an assignment statement, we always evaluate the right side then place the result in the left side. The resulting type of the right side must match the variable on the left. So I know that this f name is a string. Whatever is over here must be a string in order for this to make sense. So the object name is s, and then we use it to access the method, and then next is the name of the method. So the method name is next. It's called using the scanner object s. The method essentially pauses the program and waits for the user to enter string and press enter. The method returns a string, and that string then gets put into f name. This is the variable name. The value, this, this value will store the input. The type of the variable must match the type on the right side. I hope you notice how repetitive I am I'm being in some of these points, because often we'll make a mistake where we'll have, we'll have a string variable and we'll try and take an input for an integer or any other combination that doesn't match. Taking inputs using the scanner class is a little more, a little more complicated. Um, the scanner class does not have a method specifically designed to take character inputs. So we, we think about this as a two-step process. We first tell the computer to take a string input, and then we essentially take the first character in the string and put it in the variable. I'm going to talk about this briefly, but we'll come back to this and look at it in more detail when we, more, when we cover strings formally. So. Here's some example code. I've, moving forward, I'm going to assume the required classes have been imported, so you won't see that anymore. So if we want to take an input, we set up our variables. We have to we do this at the top. Um, we use proper naming conventions. We prompt the user, then we take an input, and then we use the variable. So for those of you in my grade 11 class, this slide goes into more detail than required at this point. 
So the key thing for you to take away is that if, if you're in the class at this point is that if I want to take an input for a character, I can use this command. But it's well worth watching and trying to get an understanding of what's going on. It's going to allow you to access a lot more interesting and fun ideas. So we cover the left-hand side because it's an assignment statement. And then we read this from left to right. So the scanner object is used to invoke a method, and that method we're invoking is next. So this is going to read a, a, a keyboard input of a string, and when I hit enter, that's going to pass the string in. So this section results in some string. So it could be, say, Paul. So then I have the string value dot char at. So what that is saying is whatever string I've typed in, I want you to access the character at position 0. And there's our method there. So this method char at can be found in the string API. So again, like I was saying, the API is documentation that helps us, helps us find the tools that we might want. Let's take a second and look for the string API. So here it is. Um, again, to find the API for, this, for any class, just go to the Google search and type in the class name space Java API. And so these are all the different methods that can be applied to strings. So if I have a string dot one of these methods, I can do some interesting things with it. Again, at this point, we're not as interested in this, but it's well worth taking a look at because it's going to allow you to do some fun things. So this is the method we want. There's our return type. There's our method name. And this is the parameter what it needs. So it, so it needs a, it, we have to call it with a string. And then it says what index position and what it spits out. The index being the position of the letter. So if I have, say, the word Bob, the indexes are going to be 0, 1, 2. B being 0, O being 1, and B being 2. That generates our character, which we then put into the character variable. So in summary, we use the scanner class to take inputs from users. Those are the methods we need to know. They will always be given to you, but you need to know how to actually use them. And again, this one isn't really a, it's a method, but it's a little bit fancier. You will always be provided, scanner de the scan provided the scanner declaration and method listings. And it's really important you always prompt for inputs. Finally, use proper naming conventions. Small case letters, subsequent words are capitalized, and they should be descriptive. So I hope that helped. And of course, if you have any questions, please ask me or post a comment. Have a great day.